creating asynchronous tasks with Celery and Django. You've built a shiny Django app and want to release it to the public, but you're worried about time-intensive tasks that are part of the app's workflow. If you don't want your users to have a negative experience while navigating the app, you can use Celery to help with that problem. Celery is a distributed task queue for Unix systems. It allows you to offload work from your Python app. Once you integrate it into your app, you can send time-intensive tasks to Celery's task queue. That way, the web app can continue to respond quickly to users while Celery completes expensive operations asynchronously in the background. In this course, you'll learn how to recognize effective use cases for Celery, differentiate between Celery Beat and Celery Workers, integrate Celery and Redis into a Django project, set up asynchronous tasks that run independently of your Django app, and refactor Django code to run a task with Celery instead. If you've never used Celery in a Django app before, or you've peeked into Celery's documentation but couldn't find your way around, then you're in the right place. You'll learn all you need to start running asynchronous tasks with Django and Celery. You'll be integrating Celery into an existing Django app, so download the course materials to jumpstart that process with the initial version of the app that you'll be working from. While the concepts and code seen in this course will work on older versions of Python, Django, Redis, and Celery, the versions used in this course are seen on screen and have been pinned where appropriate on the installation commands. Now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Python Celery Basics Celery is a distributed task queue that can collect, record, schedule, and perform tasks outside of your main program. There are two main reasons why most developers want to start using Celery. Firstly, offloading work from your app to distributed processes that can run independently of the app. Secondly, scheduling task execution at a specific time, sometimes as recurring events. Celery is an excellent choice for both of these use cases. It defines itself as a task queue with focus on real-time processing while also supporting task scheduling. Even though both of these functionalities are part of Celery, they're often addressed separately. Celery workers are worker processes that run tasks independently from one another and outside the context of your main service. Celery Beat is a scheduler that orchestrates when to run tasks. You can use it to schedule periodic tasks as well. Celery workers are the backbone of Celery. Even if you aim to schedule recurring tasks using Celery Beat, a Celery worker will pick up the instructions and handle them at the scheduled time. What Celery Beat adds to the mix is a time-based scheduler for Celery workers. In this course, you'll learn how to integrate Celery with Django to perform operations asynchronously from the main execution thread of the app using Celery workers. You won't tackle task scheduling with Celery Beat in this course, but once you understand the basics of Celery tasks, you'll be well equipped to set up periodic tasks with Celery Beat. You can see more about that at the documentation link seen on screen. Celery isn't only useful for web applications, but it's certainly popular in that context. That's because you can efficiently tackle some everyday situations in web development by using a distributed task queue such as Celery. You may want to send an email verification, a password reset email, or confirmation of a form submission. Sending emails can take a while and slow down the app, especially if you have many users. You might want to resize avatar images that users upload or apply some encoding on all images that users can share on the platform. Image processing is often a resource-intensive task that can slow down the app, particularly if you're serving a large community of users. If you allow users to add data to your app, then you might want to monitor their input. For example, you may want to check for profanity in comments or translate user-submitted text to a different language. Handling all this work in the context of the web app can significantly impair performance. If you need to make web requests to provide the service that your app offers, you can quickly run into unexpected wait times. This is true for rate-limited API requests just as much as other tasks such as web scraping. It's often better to hand off these requests to a different process. Crunching data is notoriously resource-intensive. If your web app analyzes data for your users, you'll quickly see your app become unresponsive if you're handling all the work within Django. 
Just as with any other data analysis, waiting for the results of machine learning operations can take some time. Instead of letting your users wait for the calculations to complete, you can offload that work to Celery so they can continue using the app until the results come back. If you're serving an app that allows users to generate reports from data they provided, you'll notice that building PDF files doesn't happen instantly. It will be a better user experience if you let Celery handle that in the background instead of freezing the web app until the report is ready for download. The main setup for all these different use cases will be similar. As soon as you understand how to hand off compute or time-intensive processes to a distributed task queue, you'll free up Django to handle the HTTP request response cycle. In this course, you'll be handling the email sending scenario. You'll start with a project in which Django handles the email sending synchronously, and you'll test to see how that freezes your Django app. Then you'll learn how to offload the task to Celery so you can experience how that will make your web app respond much more quickly. In this course, you'll be focusing on using Celery on Unix systems. So if you're trying to set up a distributed task queue on Windows, then this might not be the right course for you. Celery drops support for Windows in version 4, so while you may still be able to get it to work for Windows, you'll be better off using a different task queue, such as Huey or Dramatic instead. To receive tasks from your program and send results to a backend, Celery requires a message broker for communication. Redis and RabbitMQ are two message brokers that developers often use together with Celery. In this course, you'll be using Redis as the message broker. After completing the course, if you want to challenge yourself, you can try using RabbitMQ as a message broker instead. If you want to keep track of the results of your task runs, then you'll also need to set up a results backend database. Connecting Celery to results backend is optional. Once you instruct Celery to run a task, it will do its duty whether you keep track of the task result or not. But keeping a record of all task results is often helpful, especially if you're distributing tasks to multiple queues. You can use many different databases to keep track of Celery task results. In this course, you'll work with Redis both as a message broker and as a results backend. By using Redis, you limit the dependencies you need to install because it can take on both roles. You won't be doing any work with the recorded task results in the scope of this course, but as a next step, you could inspect the results with the Redis command line interface or pull information into a dedicated page in your Django project. So now you've seen more detail how Celery can help you, in the next section of the course, you'll get started on that journey by looking at how to integrate Celery with Django. Integrate Celery with Django. Now that you know what Celery is and how it can help you improve your web app's performance, it's time to integrate it so you can run asynchronous tasks with Celery. You'll focus on integrating Celery into an existing Django project. You'll start with a stripped down Django app with a minimal use case, collecting user feedback and delivering an email as a reply. Start by downloading the source code of the provided feedback app. Unzip the downloaded file and use the terminal to navigate into the source code directory where you should see a standard Django project folder structure. As is good practice, you'll need to create and activate a virtual environment as seen on screen. Once the virtual environment is active, you can then install Django, pinned here to version 5.0.1. Confirm that you're inside of the source code folder, and then finish the local setup for the Django app by running the migrations, and starting the development server. You can now open up your browser to navigate to the app's homepage at the address seen on screen, where a friendly looking feedback form should greet you. However, that feedback form currently only looks friendly. Go ahead, fill out the form and submit some feedback. Imagine that one of your web app's users would run into a situation as seen. After you press the submit button, the app freezes. 
You can see this in the browser tab, but the page is unresponsive and you can still see all the information that you entered into the form. It takes much too long for Django to process the form and redirect you to the success page. Django freezes because it needs to synchronously process the email sending request before tackling the next task, which is to redirect the user to the success page. The reason it freezes for so long is because of a time sleep call in send email that simulates a time or work intensive task that could be associated with email sending. Of course, in an actual application, you wouldn't add in an extra time delay to your code by making Django sleep, but whatever email service you do use will unfortunately introduce some delay for you. Particularly once the app starts serving multiple users, you'll run into limitations. You can substitute the time sleep call with whatever work intensive process you need to perform in your web app to serve your users. The Django application shouldn't handle long running tasks synchronously because doing so impairs your app's user experience and overall usefulness. Instead, you'll learn how to hand off this task to a Celery worker. Celery workers tackle computations as a background task and allow your users to continue browsing your web app without delay. In the next section of the course, you'll start this process by looking at how to install Celery as your task queue. Install Celery as your task queue. Now that you've set up the feedback app and felt the lag that comes from sending email, you can set out to improve the user experience. The first step in integrating Celery into your Django app is to install Celery into the virtual environment. However, just installing Celery isn't enough. If you attempt to run the task queue, you'll notice that Celery first seems to start up fine, but then displays an error message that indicates that it can't find a message broker. Celery needs a message broker to communicate with programs that send tasks to the task queue. Without a broker, it's unable to receive instructions, which is why it keeps trying to reconnect. You can use Ctrl and C to shut Celery down, and it will take a few seconds to do so, but you should see the messages seen on screen. You may have noticed the URL-like syntax in the target that Celery attempts to connect to. The protocol name AMQP stands for Advanced Message Queuing Protocol and is the messaging protocol that Celery uses. The best known project that implements AMQP natively is RabbitMQ, but Redis can also communicate using it. Before using Celery, you need to install a message broker and define a project as a message producer. In your case, the producer is your Django app and the message broker will be Redis. Redis is the next missing part of the puzzle, so in the next video, you'll take a look at installing it.